Hi guys, I'm Nidhi, one of the co-founders of The Cookaway and I've got Robin in my kitchen today uh, who's come to learn a delicious dhaba chicken curry. So what I'm going to show Robin now is to prep the ingredients for the curry and the things we need to prepare Robin are chop the onion and uh, blend the tomatoes and also prepare uh, chili and the spices are already ready which we'll talk about a bit later so have you how, how would I use yeah this is a good point onion? actually I'm, I'm not great at chopping onions could you show me the best way to, to chop so, them th so this is quite a large onion so the best thing to do is cut it in half because that helps you take the peel off quite easily so we do that and uh, when I say finely chopped or finely diced quite important to take this white bit, a lot of people don't. Ah, okay, that's um, a... So I always do that. Take oh, so white... you need that little white bit to keep it together, otherwise otherwise it starts to fall apart when you chop it. So I've taken that out, and what I want you to do is if you go along this way, yep. and holding the onion... Almost following the lines, yeah? Yes, yep. and if you keep going along the line, and chop all the way. This is a very rustic curry um, so again if, if it's not extremely finely diced that's not a problem and then holding the onion together if you just keep going along the other way that's the sort of uh, diced onion you're okay. looking for brilliant that's and in terms good. of the, the knife you've used to, to chop that is this a is this a special knife for chopping onions or can I use any old knife? Or? I quite like serrated knives. Okay. Um, I just feel like they cut through everything. I mean, sometimes when you have slightly softer tomatoes, it's very hard to um, dice them with knives like these. Okay. So I, I personally quite like to work with serrated knives. They just cut through everything very. Okay, brilliant. So if we leave you to chop the other half, and I blend the tomatoes, and yep. we work like a team and get, get cooking. Your onion yeah. is in safe hands. <laughs> right. Okay, perfect. Then we start chopping. How's that? How's that? That that looks. Is, is it all right? <laughs> I haven't managed to get it in the same little little sort of square segments, or we can the, we can go over has, it. Is that how we do it? <laughs> so one of the first things we're going to do to start with this curry is you need to add a bit of oil to the pan. Okay. Okay. So if we add a bit of oil. And is this is this any special or is there any particular oil that? So we, we send a range of cooking oils actually with our boxes, um, any specialist oils that the cooking calls for and all the Indian boxes come with rapeseed oil. Okay. Um, you basically need an oil which has a very high smoke point because Indian cooking tends to, you know, it's, it's not, we don't always stir fry, we don't always, you know, sort of saute things on very light temperatures. We also cook for a very long time. So you need an oil that can sustain those sort of temperatures. So. Rapeseed oil is a good one, vegetable oils, um, coconut oil. So depending on what cuisine you're ordering from the cookaway, for example, the Italians will come with extra virgin. Uh, you will also get the cooking olive oils, coconut oil. So we, we, we do believe in those small touches, like I said, in sending uh, premium oils. So it makes a really big difference. Absolutely. So Robin, one of the next things we're going to do is we've got the tomatoes blended there ready here. Yep. is um, you need to add the whole spices first so whole spices are your bay leaf okay. you like to take one out and it all comes pre-measured so you can you can cook this curry in you know anything between 30 to 45 minutes so if you keep that aside yep so don't put the bay leaf in yet not not yet no. you're just gathering all the whole okay. spices you've got whole cloves there and this is uh, ginger garlic. That's the right. ginger garlic that comes in a bit later. So black peppercorns, if you take them out on the board okay. with, with the bay leaves. Cinnamon sticks. Green cardamoms. Got whole cloves. <coughs> and we've already taken out the black peppercorns. What we have here is we've taken out all the whole spices, if you can see, uh, which is bay leaf, black peppercorns, green cardamoms, cloves, and cinnamon. And this is what is going to make your curry 
um, very fragrant and very flavorful. And the very first thing we do is we add spices, whole spices to the oil. So if you'd like to add these spices. I forgot to put them all in. Put them all in. And are these all the sorts of typical whole spices that you would find across multiple curry dishes? Or are these really just unique to, to, to dab a chicken? So a lot of meat dishes, you know, chicken, why, why don't you hold the spoon? If you just allow them to sizzle, you can see the oil is quite hot and you can see the cinnamon is starting to sizzle straight yeah. away. So if you just move them around in, in the oil, that's how they release the flavor. Oh, so okay. you, have to, you have to let them, uh, you know, sizzle in oil for anything between 40 seconds to a minute. Okay. Um, while whole spices are quite tough and they can withstand high heat, um, bay leaf is quite delicate. So you have to be... You have to be careful, you know how they're sizzling quite nicely without burning? Yeah. That's that's what you're looking for. So you cook on medium heat, it's not too hot. If, if it's cold, they just, just won't release the flavor okay. you know, the way they should. You don't want to end up burning burning your veins? No, no, absolutely not. So if you if you just move them around, like I said, um, keep them moving. The leaf, yeah, just in the oil. Um, and what we're going to do now is add the onions. That's the next thing coming in. So this is the time you can turn up the heat. Okay. Because the onions, um, you know, have a, like they have a lot of water content in them, so they they won't burn straight away. So you can you can turn up the heat. And what we are looking for is you have to fry the onions until they're light golden, and that's when you add the ginger garlic paste. That's your next thing. Okay. So you see, they're cooking quite nicely. I think what they need is a slight touch of oil. And if you turn up the heat, because we do want them to start browning a little bit. So I'm going to turn up the heat a little bit. Oh, we got left out. You can never have too many onions, in my opinion. No. <laughs> <laughs> so is, is there anything um, that you'd say is particularly common to all, all curries? Or ev every curry really is very different? So what, what we are cooking today is, uh, you know, dhaba chicken is from the north of India okay. and dhabas, a lot of people don't know uh, the, the way this curry gets its name is uh, dhabas are actually roadside restaurants that line the motorways in the north of India, you know, very much like how you have services here in the UK. Um, in India, as you travel across north of India, you have dhabas, which are these family run restaurants. The food is typically inexpensive, but uh, you know, it has a home cooked feel to it and it's family recipes that they have going on for years. So this chicken curry is inspired uh, by those dhabas and I love dhaba food because I've sort of grown in north of India and every time we would travel, every family would have their sort of favorite pit stops where they would stop to have a nice meal. So this, this, this curry has been inspired by them. To answer your question, most curries, yes, if you're cooking a meat curry or a chicken curry, um, will have a base where, uh, again, I'm talking with respect to North Indian food, where you will always add cold spices in the oil first, then onions, then ginger garlic, and then from there on what meat comes in and what other spices you add, you know, just gives you a different launch pad and, and helps you create different flavors if that makes sense. So would you say dabba chicken is probably your favorite favorite Indian dish? Uh, it is, yes. <laughs> uh, it is one dish I always tell people, uh, if you always wanted to cook that one curry to impress people, to cook for yourself and cook for the years to come, I think it is this one. It's really simple, it's very fragrant, it's very flavorful and I've been teaching this for nine years now and it's loved every single time.